state of the nation and uh, poverty index increase and the whole question is the crux of today's discussion and uh, we'll look at the reports uh, which uh, is coming up and uh, the national bureau uh, statistics came up with its multi-dimensional poverty index a release uh, that suggested that about 62 percent of the country's population is in abject poverty and looking at the need to rescue this challenge uh, the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clement Agba, did say that the governors did not do well or have not done well you know, in terms of helping the presidency in tackling poverty and that they've only uh, increased the poverty index uh, in that direction. And this seemed to be that uh, the minister told the tale of the tiger when he said that because the repose effect that came up was quite challenging and the governors of the third states of the federation raised their own uh, defense in that regard well discussing this with me starting from my extreme left as i always do i have uh, a clergyman and also a legal practitioner dr patrick awo osage dr patrick awo osage is the senior pastor of faith pillars gospel center welcome Thank you. Thank you, Philip. It's my pleasure to be here. And good morning, viewers at home. I just bless God that at least that name wasted didn't come out. <laughs> it almost came out because I spoke about him a while ago. <laughs> of course, yes. So uh, uh, also joining me is a human rights activist, and uh, he is Solomon Idiogbe. Thanks for coming, Solomon. Very good morning this morning. And viewers at home, very good morning this morning. I'm also expecting uh, Romeo Ugbo uh, in this same, uh, on this same platform uh, discussing the issues concerning uh, the topic as raised. Uh, my name is Philip Omo Gupo. Okay, quickly, uh, let's start with you, uh, Solomon Idiobe. Uh, there has been this issue, and uh, do you agree that the aspect of tackling poverty in the country shouldn't be left in the hands of the president alone? Uh, we had a functional system. The issue of poverty tackling should have been from the third tier of government, which is the local level. Okay. The one we popularly or uh, most often refer to as the local government uh, councils. Unfortunately, it just exists on paper in Nigeria. It doesn't exist in uh, reality. For instance, uh, if we come back here, we discover that we have not had a local government chairman in the, in the last few months, let me not say in the last many months. And I will mention that I think that the issue of poverty uh, tackling, addressing the issue of poverty, is supposed to be a general issue from uh, local government to states to federal. Mm. Uh, many states today are in the habit of collecting the funds actually meant for local government de development. And you can see now, since um, the issue of the bill for local government autonomy, they are struggling to meet the 24. Uh, House of Assembly mark because most of the House of Assembly as, as they are today are an appendage of the state executive. Uh, unfortunately, many are in the pockets of their chief executive of the state. So, and the, most of the chief executive do not want to let the local government go because if you listen to what I, I listened to the speech or the comment of uh, President Mahmoud Buhari on um, characters and actions of some governors. Uh, where they, they get money that's supposed to be for local government, share it into to make the local government authority sign for the full money, whereas they are giving them half. And then the local government uh, official as well, um, trying to also make their own profits from the federal money that is coming. We just pay salaries and then pocket the rest. I'm quoting, uh, or those um, paraphrase, I'm quoting Muhammad Dubuari. So, if you look at it too, and then you look at what uh, Yesi Winke revealed recently, about the 13 percent derivation, and then uh, only a few days ago, I think yesterday or the day before, I saw Akire Dulu trying to explain what he used this money for. At least that, that kept us all um, up asking questions, because many of us didn't know that the money came. And uh, then you look at the issues now, as it concerns the issue of the uh, poverty index Increase. as raised by Clement Agba, the Minister for Budget States, and National Planning, uh, for na bu uh, Budget and National Planning, saying that uh, uh, poverty ratio 
is at about 80 something percent with Sokoto states talking and Bayesa states following. And then they try to uh, say that it's not the issue of the amount of funds that are coming to the state, but to the fact that most governors do not spend their money, that they just do what you call whitewashing in their various state capitals and then leaving the local government. Yes, I tend to agree with that position, but accepting for the fact that I also know and I believe that Klamakba did not also go around the local government as well. But that is not to say that his assertions were not correct because many of the, uh, the, the governors as we have them today are chief executives. They are there at their various, um, at their different states, you know, superimposing, utilizing the uh, monies made for local government to feed themselves and cater for things that ought not to. For instance, we are aware of so many states collecting revenues that are credible to local government. I'm not talking about federal allocations, I'm talking about states' IGRs. You know that market revenues are supposed to be um, derived, you know, are supposed to be sourced by local government. You know that waste management are exclusively issues of uh, the local government. Okay. The issues of parks are also issues that are supposedly part of revenue generations for local government. Okay. As we have it today, right. Mr. Philip, you and I know, for example, that the state we are in, okay. the, the issue I'll of back revenue I'll generations... Come, I'll, come back to you. Really I'll come back to you on that, but let's quickly take uh, Patrick Awos again. Uh, you agree that the president came with a campaign promise. Uh, like what the governors of the Texas states raised uh, on the need to lift 100 million people from poverty. And uh, it, it was criticized, although there's a benchmark on that uh, for 2030. Uh, but do you see the statement credited to the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clement Agba, uh, as really uh, the right thing to say concerning that regard? Thank you very much. I, uh, it's, it's saddened my heart to to hear people in characters like that make comments, you know, you know, you live, he that live in a, in a glass house should not um, throw stones because the man Clement, Agba himself, had been in government, not today, he's been there for quite a time. I remember prior to now, he had served even in this state and there were some projects that he also championed in this state that we all know you know, coming to tell the world that um, look at what is going on. It has been a system that's been running. I would like, would like to call it a mafia system that tries to shut the, change the people and keep them away. Patrick Slomumba, Professor Patrick Slomumba in Kenya, the made statement that in, 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 in Japan, if you perpetrate fraud, you commit suicide. In China, you get killed. In Europe, you go to prison, but in Africa, they prepare you for the next election. Mm -hmm. That have been the narrative. That have been the system. The people that have taken the reins of leadership have not been people of proven character. And all we want is that somebody somewhere is pushing someone to be, you know, to become whatever. Like I've often criticized what a man just showed up in an office, he said is his excellency. What has he done excellently that you are celebrating him at that instance? For me, I don't see anything you know, wonderful about it. But we to not to... He won votes. He won votes. Vote. He won votes. How did he win? Go back to Joseph Stanley. He that cast the votes means nothing. That's what Stanley told us. He said the one that counts is who determines everything. Mm. And the one that counts is being controlled by the one that pay him. And you and I know those that pay those that are serving there. Let's not go there. My point is this. We keep regurgitating, going back and forth on this issue here and down. The major issues we know, and we are not ready to address it. When we are ready, then we'll really do the needful. Are you saying that doesn't rest on the governors or on the states? I'm like you said, it's the also, also a the big sky. role for the local government to I drive said, in that direction. I made a but are you saying that all of this is solely I, on the presidency or well, the well, I'm federal not saying government? that. I'm trying to establish something. I'm trying to lay foundation. Okay. Now. You, the ones communicating, the man that is speaking, the Minister for Budget um, uh, that is speaking now, Clem Agba, yeah. what I'm saying here is, he had at the time said, when you are out of there, you know how to speak. 
And that's basically what I'm saying. We would not distance ourselves from the fact that government, the federal government have its own responsibility, the state does, and the local government, like my brother, have established. T.A. Tomwell has told us that the local government is the third tier of government that we should allow. And that's, like, I totally so, uh, you know, agree with him. The, the, the local government, ordinarily, they are closest to the people. They should be more bullish in terms of funds. But as it turns, they are being ripped off over time. And they can't talk. A lot of them are running for legal services because EFCC and these um, agencies are after them. If you don't concord, they will now begin to quiz you through using some superpowers to press you down, which we all know that is going on. But basically what I'm saying here, the governors on their own, they have become like um, some little monarchs of sorts that carry themselves. I don't know where they got those powers from, but it's unfortunate that okay. the people had given that to them. So you and mean to say that they share in the blame? The state governors? Yes. Of course, the chunk of it. That's what you're not getting what I'm saying. Please try to understand what I'm saying. I'm only trying to establish that the federal government have its role. Oh, yes. I must commend President Buhari to a great extent. He have always given out money. He have always supported them with money. So you wouldn't say, even if in theory of security that we all know and some other areas have not been attended to, but in terms of this busing, even during the, the, the COVID and we saw what happened with the palliatives. So it wasn't the president's fault. So we must really speak the truth. The state governors have not lived up to expectation. And that is true. It's evident all over the states, everywhere you go to in Nigeria, except for the few that you say they are just coming up. They are really not doing, I don't score any of them, no governor in Nigeria. I don't score any governor in Nigeria 20%. Okay, but the aspect mm -hmm. of tackling poverty is taking us to rural areas. It's taking us to the farmlands. Yes. It's taking us to agro-business. Yes. But do you agree that the federal government plays a vital role as pertaining to uh, security? And that, again, the governors raised as a challenge that is cutting across the tensest states of the federation over uh, the need to bring uh, some assurances yes. in terms of uh, tackling insecurity, which yes. has been a challenge. You've, you've been uh, on this uh, yes, platform uh, several yes, yes, where yes. it's been said that uh, the federal government seems to be playing this with kid gloves. I, I, I agree with you. But the truth, again, is, you see, in as much as we understand that we are in a system like this, that the federal government controls the police as it stands, and we don't have state police as it were, but we also have our local vigilantes. I remember the Amote Kun that was set up the other time, and we must also understand that these criminals or perpetrators in court of these acts, they are not that sophisticated. Okay, but you, are also, on, you, you also understand that even the Amote Kun you made mention of, yes, the vigilante yes. you made mention of, yes. they are limited, they have limited powers in terms of handling, handling weapons. No, 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 that's not correct. They have limited powers in handling weapons. They are trained for it. Sophisticated weapons, I mean. Uh, when you say sophisticated, I agree. We are not talking about sophisticated weapons now. Because but those who, who, who terrorize the states, they go with sophisticated weapons. Where is what I'm trying to say? You see, my brother said something. I, I verily accept and submit to what he said. He said, you know, a working system. Okay. Now, now, if things are not working, you must create a way to find solution. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. I would remember when I was almost um, attacked or attacked by the, the criminal heads guys. What happened? I discovered that night that it's actually the host community that accommodates them. They are working together. So we must understand this. So the local um, folks there, they team up with these supposed criminals and they work hand in hand. So how will you expect such a hydra monster to be attacked? Because of the system, because they are benefiting from it when they pick up people for kidnapping and then they pull money back and they get paid. So that's what I'm talking about. It also falls down on they are not getting anything. This could just be our own way of making money mm. because, and uh, you know, the governor has gone his way and the local government chairman has kept the remaining like my brother <laughs> spoke, <laughs> you know, and then the little way to make more money is to join these criminal elements and then see how we can run. You okay. know, that's been the problem. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's tackle this point where insecurity has become a, a very big challenge to uh, improving on the agro business and uh, in the rural areas you agree with me and you've been on this platform to tackle that where uh, some criminal elements uh, succeeded in driving away you know the incentive for people to go to their farmlands this controlled by the federal government in terms of security as much as i agree that um, the issue of security is a federal issue but I think that the state governors are not doing too well. If is the federal government doing well? 
as much as they are not doing SLM anywhere, the state government are not doing even anywhere. Okay, but you seem not to push much blames to the federal government, rather you chasing the state government. You see, let me tell government. you, um, Clemagba, when he talked about Sokoto State, oh, but you say, mm, Agabaina, na begi, na bidati, naturally, for us here. And they will tell you, too, they don't, they don't have oil. How about Bayelsa State, that has so much in so terms much. of so much. funds? That's correct. I went to Potakot. I saw the bridges that uh, Yesin Wike did. Whether he expended half of the money or quarter of the money or the entire money, is all left to him and his conscience. But the man has something to show. Exactly. exactly. He did 12 bridges. Oh, no, 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 don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, don't no. let's misfocus. No, I asked no, you about no, the challenge somewhere. of insecurity. We're going, we're going somewhere, right? sir. We're going somewhere. Okay. I, I need to set a foundation. Okay. A man built 12 bridges, opened up that dualized three existing bridges. He went to the interlands, tried to create accessible roads. You know what that does? That Definitely. removes insecurity. Exactly. Because when the roads are narrow, they are bush paths. Insecurity, criminality thrives very well in that area. But when the man opens up the road, there are tar roads, you know, then the security agency too will go and stay there and collect their good as normal. That was so weird off the presence of uh, criminal elements. You're talking about the urban areas. What about the rural areas? I'm going, that's what if, I'm saying. No, I'm about the there. It's it's I said in talent. I didn't talk about it's, it's I the talent. I said in talent. So I was making, I'm making direct focus on the locals okay and the man came on television and he's asking you to challenge him i challenge you i'm talking about i'm using yes we can as an example now the man who went because he was the one the lion said he seemed to have touched the lion still the tiger still. The, the tiger still it was a lion that was bold enough for the tiger that could come and approach a climate and said i challenge you mention anywhere and you know he went to the local area and said are you people not feeling the impact of governance in your in your local area because he was able to construct road That's right. from the um, urban area to the rural area. He said for agro-business. And when this agro-business is able to uh, leave the rural area to the urban area, there is exchange of money. If you like, you say there's butter trade. Uh, I give you, give me. You understand? Okay, but, but, that, but does all this take away the challenge of insecurity, which I asked you? I, that's where I'm going. And I've said, I've said if the governors were doing well, the issue of this insecurity would have also been able to reduce to minimum. Nice, eh? my, my brother here mentioned clearly the issue of conspiracy by the locals. Why are these locals involved in this criminal act? Many of them don't have good roads, no, no schools, no good schools. No, no pipe. No, the issue of pipe water is a, is a, is in my own area here. I don't know for other states. It's like a forbidden thing. It's borrowed thing now. When you think about, they are very much likely to also come and give you tax for for your borrow. So these are part of the issues. When the government, for instance, I'm aware that at a point, security agencies were on the neck of um, of government to ensure that um, bush parts on the highways we are clear because at the point the civil society took a visit to some of the security agencies when the issue of this insecurity kidnap was yeah. on the increase and one of the things that we took home there was that we as security agencies would do our own as is to tackle but there's also a need for government to do their part and they gave instance that we are asking that xyz road like bush parts falling on the road should be removed so that when we have our men here we'll be able to see over uh, a kilometer stretch of the road or two so that if we're engaging anybody we know we are engaging and people will not be hiding on the on the bush uh, bushes on the roadside and we agreed with them because they lose their men by the, by the day people who take spus um, um, the special units protection unit of the of the police the ones that use blue berets okay you know many of them have lost their lives because the man they are guiding will sit in his bulletproof car whereas the security men who are guiding them will be left open in a van and then when an attack comes at the first casualties it takes us back to the issue of state government not doing the needful because if you go to the hinterlands you go to the 
to construct a road. Look at it now, for instance. Uh, from Benin to Ugo, to Uboko, to Umogu, to even to on this other side, to Oza. You understand? There are no good roads. There are narrow roads. If you ask, they tell you uh, Benin Abraka Road is a federal road. What are the palaces that the state governors have done? For instance, we are aware that the money Adam Soshomole used in fixing federal roads. All right, all right, all right. I think, no, I think, I'm giving I think, I think no, for, us, no, for us not to lose focus of what I'm not we are losing discussing. focus. The point right, I'm right. trying to make okay, is okay, that okay, state okay. government should act. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. But we take a short break as this money on ITV. Do stay. TMI. Every opinion counts. State of the nation, poverty index increase, and the whole question is the crux of today's discussion. And before we had that break, uh, we had the opportunity uh, to have the uh, Solomon human rights activist, Solomon Ijobe, having the floor. But now we've been joined by uh, a politician and uh, a youth activist in the person of Romeo Osaitin Ubo. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right, so uh, let's quickly, uh, before I come to you, Osai Tungbo, uh, Solomon Idiogbe had the floor. And, yeah, so uh, as I was saying, that yeah. until we are able to get governors to be accountable for the funds, because as we speak, local government councils don't exist. Whereas it's on paper that we have three tiers of government. But unfortunately, very, very unfortunately, the second tier of government has tiered the third tier of government to non-existence. And so until we are able to get them to at least allow, because the only thing that can bring back the local government's uh, strength is autonomy. Okay. They are able to control <laughs> their funds. Okay. As much as I do believe, and I know very clearly, and that's one thing I am not very comfortable with, with this federal government. Okay, let me the ask issue, you. Let me, ask me, Philip, let me put it clearly. The issue of the coming to fight uh, corruption mantra, and then you are handling it with kid gloves. I tell you this. The same president who was, if you listen to the speech or comment of Mr. President, where he said that um, uh, local um, state governors, he made mention of a, a person doing this is a, is a lawyer and whatever. Why not mention it? You are fighting corruption. Why, why, why printing it? Why not tell us so that the ESCC, we, if they can go, we'll begin to use the person to sing songs. So it goes back to the same place. Yes, as much as I know, this government, the federal government, haven't failed us security-wise, haven't failed in the responsibility of protections of lives and property in Nigeria, but I also tried in the, uh, in the areas of releases, funds released to state governments, and the uh, state government are not doing well. My brother I talked about Clemagba. I, I do not I didn't want to talk much about Clemagba, but I think too when he was here as a commissioner, I did well. He designed the water storm project when he was commissioner for environment. And then they started the project. But the rest uh, is now you can say it's history. Okay, thank you. Uh, well let's uh, have your uh, opinion about this uh, because we have this challenge where even while the president came into power, or before he came into power, he had his campaign promises of lifting 100 million people from poverty. And uh, there's been this challenge of uh, insecurity, you know, that really has been driving a lot of farmers from uh, their farmlands. And uh, even state governments uh, have been having this challenge, you know, where they can't equip their uh, local uh, security network with adequate and sophisticated weapons, you know, to... Uh, match the wherewithal being uh, held by the other uh, non-state actors. Now, what do you make of this about the whole blame game between the federal government and the governors on who is to be blamed or whose role it is to play the aspect of, uh, you know, reducing poverty in the country? Oh, well, you, you see uh, a lot have gone down and the federal government, the state government, is a, is a body. So, but to me, if I look at it critically, I would say the federal government is to be blamed. Because you cannot just allow the state government to do, the state government cannot just do what they, 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 they just want to do mm. without um, getting 
be tried from the federal government, getting approval from the federal government. And the federal government initiates programs? Yes. So there are so many things the, the executive, the federal government system, they, they need to do that the state government need to take uh, information from them to accomplish in the state. Okay. So the state, if you talk about poverty, like who is to be blamed, I put the blame on the federal government first. Although okay. they both have their own blame. They both have their own blame. The state government have their own blame. The federal government have it all. Okay, have because more of the blame. Yes, because oh. they control the country. If anything is going on in the state right now, like anything is going on in those state and all that, the federal government is with their way in one way or the other. Because they say that uh, the aspect of uh, security yes. comes first, you know, to bring about a uh, boost in the economy. Yes, so that is it. So to me, the federal government is to be held responsible for this situation that we are having when it comes to poverty. Because the head, the federal government is the head, remember? And you cannot just tackle problems from, from behind when okay. dealing with such things. So you have to focus on the federal government because if the head is organized, all that body will fall in place. Because that's where power flows from. That's where power flows from. Okay. So the states, they are just taking some, uh, they take orders from the federal government. So if they don't get uh, orders from the federal government or something, the state will not be balanced. You understand that? Because the state is a state in Nigeria. You get it? And we have a father. The father is the federal government. And so many things are being done by them that the states get information from them to operate. Okay, but allocations, what is being argued now is that allocations come from the federal government, yes. and the federal government have disbursed a huge, homongous amount of money, okay. and uh, they seem not to see a representation of this money, you know, in, in aspect of tackling poverty in the state. If I give you money to do something for me, don't you think I'll follow up what you, what you use that money to do? Do you think I will give you money, disburse money for you to do something, then there will not be monetary committee to monitor the money I give to you? Is the federal government monitoring? And that's the problem. Okay. So if I give you money and you are not using it well, um, it's my duty to ask you, uh, what, is, what, what are you doing with this money? Why is it that this money you collected or we gave you is not being used the way it ought to be used? On the federal system of government? Yes. So if the federal government is, if they, if they um, decide to say, okay, let's just leave it like that, let's leave it to go the way it is going, then the force is on them. Okay. Well, uh, you've raised a lot of dust yes. uh, because I could see some um, some expressions of disapproval yeah. on my <laughs> on the cold discussions. Yeah. But let me start with you, Patrick. I was saying, do you, you agree? Who Klein and Sinker with what? Uh, I said? do not agree in very clear terms because we have a constitution to start with. You know, we have a federal system. Now, the governors are not like children in the house like we paint them to be. That's not correct. I don't agree with that totally, in the sense that if the governor, you know, he, he has immunity. I hope you understand what immunity clause is. Uh, like I cannot institute any action, criminal action against His Excellency God, Governor Godwin Obaseki. Why? Because of the immunity. So how will the federal government now get down? And moreover, he has the power to administer the state. That is what he was elected to do. So all the government or the federal government could in the aspect of tackling insecurity and poverty. poverty in the asp in the asp no 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 because you can't take away uh, security security because uh, security is pivotal for poverty to be reduced because we talk about capital flight uh, for instance yes. Patrick Awosage we talk about capital flights you know in investments that should have you know brought about a boost in the economy yes. are taken to flight because of insecurity I don't you bothered about that. What I'm saying is this. Just try to get what I'm saying. Just like the, I, I don't know how to put this, but I'm trying to create, I don't want to sound too high. Okay. I want everybody to understand. Okay, we have crude oil. We send it out for refine and we bring it back to sell. Does it make sense? What has happened over time? So let's look at that. So, so that's the federal government, that, that's the federal so government role. That's the federal Hold on. That, I'm just giving an example. Okay. I'm not leaving, I'm not blaming. See, this is all encompassing okay we all have blames but for you to say the federal government the state governments i verily believe mm. they have more blame in terms of poverty okay tackling, tackling poverty but in terms of security wise then we can start talking about the federal government because the state government they don't control the police the police don't take orders from them and all of that but they have security votes 
to boost their local you know, security as it stood then. And that's basically what I'm trying to say. So if we are looking at it from that angle, you will understand very well that the federal government on its own have given money. We can't say, oh, the government is not releasing money now. Even during COVID, he did all of that. He's all, is he all about giving money or still giving a, a, a convenience atmosphere for the money to be utilized uh, what properly? I'm saying, what I'm saying, in a sense, you're saying the convenient atmosphere. No no no, 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 because the aspect of insecurity is, yeah, they, is, is sitting hard on yes, the states of the federation. You. Like I said, security is actually not a one man's business. We should demystify this whole idea. Like I said, we already have a system that is faulty. And you wouldn't blame the man that has come in to say, well, this is what it is. He met a system on ground. He didn't draft the 1999 constitution. He was not there. So he will he not change the constitution because, you know, he's... I remember the same Muhammad Buhari in the, in the 70s, late 70s, how he, you know, you know with the Chad saga, how he went far, you know, with the military. He's not a military general. He is a president. He mm -hmm. must be... He must administer, you know, the state or country by, by the means of the constitution. And the constitution we have is so, you know, it's shaded with so many, of, you know, complications that at the end of the day, he can, his hands are tied in some areas. Now, basically, I'm not totally supporting to say, well, he has done so well. Yes, I will applaud him for the fact that you have been magnanimous enough because it's not an issue of being magnanimous when you release your uh, the, the allocation because he could have sat on it. You know, I was here some time ago, and someone asked and said, it was, you know, I don't know who again. And it was you again, you asked. <laughs> and when I was up, uh, applauding the, the, the Ibrahim Babangidas, um, oh, yes. you know, and you said, why? But the money was more. I said, if he had sat on the money and didn't release it for the third Milan Ridge, we won't do anything to him. Hmm. That he did something, we must commend him. That's how to even encourage him. You know, I'm not a fan of the Buhari administration, but we have carefully looked at what he has done. During the COVID, I said nothing. And we discovered that Paletti went stuck up in various states and, um, you know, uh, states. Well, I, I, think you are saying, I think you are saying this because of, of the kind of governance we have in Africa. Because uh, the kind of government we have in Africa is we celebrate what duly should be done for the people. And yeah. if any leader does that, from the state coffers, from the common patrimony of the people. The leaders are celebrating. But leaders the leader of politics is not so. Agreed. Because Since what we have ever, agreed that we are not developed. is allocated from Since the federal state. Since we have that we have not developed should to that extent. Should be seen as a thing of... Um, I will see it as something that we should appear like Dr. Kante Washington said, sir. It's, it's the responsibility will, of the me, federal sir, government to I will, do that. I will not... Dr. Kante Washington said, as slaves, or rather, semi cobblers and cleaners of table be happy with what you have all right and that's how to live a good life all right now if i don't applaud the federal government of what they've done will i now am i not going and if it doesn't do it what will i do what will you and i do so we need to keep <sighs> applauding them but again the people that receive the money we don't, we don't want to talk about that i'm talking of the state governors that are receiving allocation we're talking about 13 percent derivation now that have caused a whole lot of controversies everywhere we are not even looking at that. And again, I'm not also zeroing on getting money from government as it were. If you are a leader, you should create opportunities. It's not about how much you receive. It's about how well you understand leadership and how well you could navigate. That's why you are there. And how accountable. Accountable, of course. Accountable. Transparent. We have, of course, we know what okay. the Accountable General right. of the Federation did All right. to the Treasury. Okay. So when you're talking of accountability, I wonder what you're talking I'm about. I was an accountant. He's an accountant. <laughs> I'm also an accountant. <laughs> you know, but, but, well, let's not make light of this, but what I'm trying to say, being accountable is something that um, is what should be in an ID setting. All right. I mentioned at the beginning, in Japan, when you commit fraud, you commit suicide. In China, they kill the person. Then, who? then in, in Europe, you are in prison. You are in prison. But in Africa, you are brought up for election. For election. That is what basically what we are looking at. So when it's that system, so who are those that are ruling or leading? Who are the political class? Don't they all have great things in their cover? And then you are here talking about well, what will you do? They control the system and to a great extent. Some persons have been asked for their certificate and it's becoming an issue. And why are you talking? That's not leadership. Excuse me, you should be probable. I should hope you want to hold an office. I should ask you, where have you schooled? How, at least I know my classmates. When I was in law school, I know my friends. When I was in the, was this school again? All my secondary schools, I know them. We know ourselves. 
But some persons, I remember one, um, I don't want to mention him before you crucify me. He was a speaker then, and then he was the only one that went for youth service. And that was strange. I'm not talking of the finance minister. I'm talking of a speaker, uh, you know. And I saw him as a tiny boy wearing the NYC. And the people said, we don't know him. And the, the, the book of life that was signed that year, his name was not there. And then these are the kind of leadership we have. And what okay. do you expect? Well, so, that's, uh, you just drew a distinction <laughs> between uh, African politics or the yes. way Af uh, politics is being played in Africa yes. as compared to developed yes. politics. We're growing. We're well, growing. Let's test your opinion <laughs> and uh, your um, veracity in terms of what uh, Romeo Ubo said. I, your reactions? I was uh, totally shocked. And if you ask me, I was taken aback to hear him push all blames on federal government. Of course, of course, the federal government has not done excellently well. Of course, there are disappointments in the areas of security and a few other areas. But you cannot take out the fact that, yes, we can mention the issue of 13% derivation since 1999. He's the only president that stood up and said, Collect your money. Collect your money. And nobody's doing anything. Look. Okay, okay. If, if I, I ask you, you still have the floor. But if I ask you, I want us to be guided in this. If I ask you, in terms of percentage on uh, the responsibilities of the federal and the states in terms of reducing poverty, which is much? The states. Okay. Go ahead. The states. Because you talk about states, you're talking about local governments. Okay. And like I started with, it is yes. the response of the local government that does not exist. That's correct. And so, well, because the state and society is strangling them, making life out, life out of them. Now, my brother forgot that the state has autonomy. It's an autonomous state. Absolutely. The local government does not. That's what we are still fighting for as we speak just now. That the local government should have same autonomy that the state has. Why? It is the autonomy that the state has that the federal government cannot interfere in the affairs of the state. Exactly. I'll give you an instance. When the state house of assembly had issues, and then you were talking about nine over how many? Uh, 14 over, over, over uh, I'll be 11 over 9, uh, 14 over 10. Mm -hmm. uh, the federal government made an attempt to interfere. What happened? The state told them we are a state. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's correct. We are a state. You cannot, when the National Assembly, they went to call, please interpret the role. That's right. That's enough for you to understand that the state has its autonomy. Look, the state governors are chief executive of their states. You can't generalize that. No, they are. They are. You course. can't even buttress that. You know, uh, no, excuse me, I still have the floor. I still have the floor. Okay. When somebody say control your emotions. Because, because, <laughs> because they are recognized as the chief executives. Yeah. Chief executives. Uh, but blanket statements are not allowed. No. At least. Let's not make blanket statements. No, it's not blanket statements. I, 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 I want you to be objective. It's objective. Uh, is it, I, is I it, want you to have be objective. Have you become a liar that, that governors of the state are chief executives of their state? That they are chief security officers of their state? All of us know this. But let me tell you, it is no lie. It is true. Except for the fact that the state governors are chief executive and chief security officers of their state um, administration. Okay. I'm, I'm coming. Don't cut me, please. They are chief security officers administrations. Whereas the commissioners of police and other security agencies are operational. Leaving the police as a lead agency who automatically becomes the chief security officer operations. And that's why most times they work hand in hand. And to say that governors does not control police. I am in a state where I've seen governors, especially men, controlling the police commissioner. Okay, let's go to the local No, governments. we are going to local government. Yeah, we are yes. talking about reducing poverty. When you talk about reducing poverty, it takes us back to the activities of the state. Right. It takes us back. I'm with you. We're on the same page. state governors. We're on the same the page. Go but, this money. but let the pendulum swing. It shouldn't just rest with you. Let it swing. You've, no, you've but, ventilated your so opinion. Can, see, and you know, it is a problem I have with, uh, uh, with uh, Philip Omar Gupo. He allows, when a man speaks from his mind, he takes it. You gave him so much time. 
You gave him some mustard. I kept quiet and I was smiling. Because I knew when it gets to my time, that is where the, the problems of this state starts from. That is small power that they give to you. You refuse to, to ad do administration, equitable distribution of powers. Right here, even on the studio, so the government uh, uh, is not distributing adequately power. No, the truth is, he, has, he wants to give you more time, more than that. And that's where I am saying that when it comes to the issue of reducing poverty, we should give little blames. Because when you talk about insecurity, now, the southern governors met, irrespective of the area you are from, whether you are from southeast, southwest, or south south, southern governors met and gave a benchmark for September last year that all states must pass a law, you know, prohibiting open grazing. Of course, you all know the stories. That why some came up with their design, passed their laws, came up with America, some southern states refused to even draft, let alone send them. Okay. And that issue is an issue of security. Some resorted to say, we want to take you to a town hall meeting. When we got people like us attending the one here, the town hall meeting, it became a, 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 a monologue rather than being a dialogue. Okay, I it think it starts back to the issue of. Because when you were talking, when you were talking, you asked him accountability. How many of the state governors are accountable? Okay, but I, I, I believe it's obvious that you've spoken enough in oh, no, that no, regard. No, no, no. And uh, <laughs> in, in, in all of the uh, ventilations we've had, uh, you, Patrick, have had much as compared to Romeo, who just... No, uh, justify the action. And so, and so no, please. Justify the action. Uh, let's, let, let's, have exactly let's have that an equitable... That's exactly what Let's have an equitable when opportunity, I think like you said. When I think governor sees this money and decided it wrongly, they come to give an explanation. Okay. And I can uh, allow Philip to do thank, that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, now, let's get your viewpoint. Now, we've had the release yes. from the NBS, the National Bureau of Statistics, yes. saying that subnational governments you know, are not uh, account showing accountability yes. in terms of funds management. And that's basically where yeah. uh, Patrick Aosage and, of course, uh, Solomon Ijobe is really, uh, yeah, uh, no, 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 not, not getting it wrong. He's really raising their thoughts okay. in that direction. Uh, do you agree with the release of the National Bureau of Statistics in that report as to the fact that uh, the state governments are not really showing accountability in that direction? And the National Bureau of Statistics also released the index where it brought about the increase in poverty, you know, and also found uh, a challenge where in states, uh, the issues of poor delivery of health, uh, social programs, and education is also affecting or increasing the measures, you know, of poverty in these states. Do you agree with those statistics as brought about by the NBS. <clears throat> that um, the state government are not doing the right thing. Yeah, yes, it captured state governments as being held responsible. But the truth is, this is Nigeria. Let me look at it like this. This is Nigeria. And, you know, there is nothing, I still go back to what I've said, there is nothing that the federal government cannot control when he is the, the, they are the, the leaders. I don't know if you understand that. Now, if the, the state government is not doing the right thing, I believe there are somebody that called them to order. True or false? So, can you explain that to me? Oh, well, well, you are not the president. You still have the floor. You still have the floor. You still have the floor. I'm saying that. Okay, I'll come back to you. I'm supposed to be the regulators of the activities of the state. That's who speak. Do you agree? They are about to Do you agree? 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 Uh, so if being the closest to the people, don't you see them having the wherewithal, or rather, yes. don't you see them as well positioned to bring about uh, respite in this direction of uh, uh, ameliorating the people from poverty? Yes. But this, this so, so, so what do you see as stopping them? Because just now we've seen reports suggesting or giving the impression that some state governors or uh, state governments hold these funds that are supposed to be uh, given to the local government yes. to to uh, utilize for that purpose, which, which uh, to their mind, you know, is not bringing about respite in that direction of ameliorating poverty. What do you have to say in that, yeah, in that regard? Let's, let's, uh, like I also said, nobody, everybody is 40. 
when the federal government mm -hmm. and the state government they are fighting. But me, I put the blame so much on the federal government. But now, you know, it's been something I've been thinking, I've been looking at because I, I, I really don't know what to do about it. Like, look at it now. Our local government system is not functioning. So, who's to blame on that? On that. Do you blame the federal government or the state? For that reason, I blame the state. Oh. Yeah, you know why I blame the state for that? You know, I told you, I said everybody have a blame. Okay. Everybody have a blame. The president, the, president, the federal government have a blame. The, the, the governor, they have a blame. Now, look at it. The system cannot function when one system is down properly. Yeah, I hope you understand that. Okay. Now, the state cannot function properly when the local government system is down because that is the grassroots okay so you seem to be suggesting that the state seems to be starving the local government with funds yes okay now look at when i was growing up i used to I know people it. like counselors they used to be counselor after counselor what what counselors you know what counselors you have what counselors yeah, yeah, that, 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 that one is for the people in the the neighborhood like if they have any issue in their place they run to the the, the person and that one takes it to the local government um, office now there is no counselor there is no local government chairman in my state for as i speak now i don't know if they have it because sometimes they do things you will know I, what they did now <laughs> I, 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 yeah, so that one is, so that one is federal government for two no way i told everybody have their own blame so i'm taking the blame where the, uh, the state government blame is oh, yeah. i'm taking it there now now that system is down first of all on the ground now how do you expect only the if everybody if they, if they have problem in my world now they, they take it to the uh, uh, government house which is not supposed to be like that true of course true. it's not supposed to be like that so but now if they have problem in the uh, in my local government area now not in my world now in my local government yeah, they take it to the uh, uh, governor's house which is not supposed to be like that it's supposed to be the local government chairman that's okay so so, so 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 how do we correct these anomalies now how to correct this thing do you want to tell me that the federal government is not aware that all these things are going on that's why federal government is instead of autonomy of local government okay. at the point it gave it as an executive uh, okay. fiat oh, oh, okay you have you have one minute to uh, okay. address that okay. and now, to make a closing amount on that the federal government is not aware that all these things are, are, are it's not within their powers it's not that it's not within the federal, the federal, government, government, federal order. government federal no, no, government he has one minute, don't worry, you, you utilize your place. You call them to order. This is your country. If anything go wrong in this country, they hold the, the, the uh, they don't, not the state. I'm telling you the truth. If, for instance, now Edo State have a big problem now, there is a problem in Edo State. Do you think the federal government will not be called to order that the, your, one of your state is having a big problem? It will be called to order. I'm seeing it in that perspective. I'm not saying the, the Fed, I'm not pushing the blame all like, okay, the federal government is who I'm holding responsible for the problem of yeah, this right country. Time. All right, all right, yes, thank you. Not the, I'm not holding the state. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Romeo. Will go. No, big no. Problem. I think that as for, your closing remarks, for, uh, for because purpose, he just summarized with the fact the, that the, yeah. the federal for, government is more of a problem yes. in this regard. For the purpose of getting it straight, the federal government cannot as much as talk on the issue of the state because the has, state has assembly as saddled. But that's why they have representatives from each of the constituencies. Okay. Yes. And then they are the ones that can speak on issues like that. And let me tell you, when it came to the issue of local government, the federal government tried to talk to the government, it was not going. At a point, it came with an executive fiat. And governors went to court to challenge him and said, no, it is not within his powers. Now, they came to constitutional amendment. The issue of constitutional amendment, they took it. They, you know, at a point, even the issue of judiciary, he made the executive fiat that of uh, judiciary should have autonomy. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, you know, excuse me, right. sir, this point I'm trying to make here is that you seem not to understand the workings of federalism. Okay. That every part has its functions. Mm -hmm. That the federal government cannot superimpose itself on the issues of the state. So to the extent he tried to make that, he was challenged. I get the issue of the adult house assembly issue, had they were bar out. Now, on the issue of local government autonomy, the best it could do was to encourage federal legislators to as much as see how they can put it or as part of the amendment. And at the end, if he does not get 24 signature, uh, signatures from, uh, from 24 uh, state of assembly, he cannot fly. Even if it's done as an amendment, he still falls back to the state. And they okay. say he who pays the piper, he takes the tune. That's right. As we speak, yes. 
Many of the state houses of assembly are but an appended, if you like, a rubber stamp, or if you like, almost a non existence in their state because of the overbearing power of the state chief executive of the state. Therefore, as it stands, there are certain things because what the, fed, the states or the federal government can only do is to ensure that the state gets their revenue um, percentage and all and all that is accruable yeah, to the federal government. Which you see the federal government doing properly? Yeah. In the, yeah, are you, are you saying that? They are doing, they they are doing that well. And, and in the area of um, evil lands, federal government cannot come here now and take a million hand. It's owned so by the state. state. Yes. So these are areas I want you, excuse me, sir, that I want you to understand that when it comes to a federal state, the federal government don't may be the big brother. Yeah. Uh, I, the father has it where? Many of the children of a big brother yeah, or a yeah, father no, can go rogue. Okay. And if your son goes rogue, the worst you can do, you talk about when the state is not funny, functioning. The only thing Mr. President can do is to declare a state of emergency. And there are rules. Okay. You cannot wake up I don't know, I don't know how long declare, this banter is going to be. And declare state of emergency. Thank you, thank you so much, Jobe. They will take him up too. Solomon Jobe, thank you. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how long this banter is going to be. Thank you, Solomon Jobe. Solomon Jobe, you've been very, very contagious when it comes to arguments. And I was to swing the pen. To Patrick, but I'm yeah. sorry, and yeah. you yeah. stole it. Yeah. Well, I didn't feel like the glare of the viewers. <laughs> well, you asked me, how to do you play. explain that? No, you asked me to go. You I didn't, didn't say that. You didn't stop me. You stole it. No, no, when I was talking, you asked me to go. <laughs> okay, now, Patrick. I asked him to go, I'll give you <laughs> okay. Thank you, yeah. Patrick. I was let's get your closing remarks on this, knowing full well that we have a challenge mostly as it has to do with the local government. Because that, according to what I read, even while I was in school. Is the closest government to the people and so it's expected that if you want to make all the jig or to bring about a change in the system where you affect lives and ameliorate people from poverty you hit the local government so how do we do that well getting the local government to work the way they should it's something that still lies within the powers of the states mm. as it stands today there's nothing you can do other than if these state governors, and I think the electorate should begin to take cognizance of that. I think um, the people, the poverty again, another thing we have not really talked about is that again, in as much as we have talked about the government, the states, uh, federal, the individuals, you could see the way we behave. This festive period, people are borrowing money to buy food stuff, and they know they are going to pay rent at the end of the year. Mm. They're going to pay school fees at the, you know, January. Nepal or BADC going to come to demand for whatever it is. You call that misplaced priorities. Misplaced priorities. A lot of us were wasteful, and that is the truth. And we are very much irresponsible. I'm not excluded from it. We drink can water, throw it on the road, and the drains are blocked, and we blame the state government. Mm. So these are some of the things we see in civilized climate. Each time we go, mm. we behave, we begin to adjust. Behavioral and, attitudes. Yes, and I saw a governor... Uh, you know, standing right in the bus alone, that here you will disturb us with all manner of salary. You know, it doesn't make any sense. That's basically our people should take their own destiny in their hand. Try to improve your life a little and see so that other than those uh, governments will come. There is no government that will change your story if you are not ready to join the moving train. Mm -hmm. I think that's another aspect. So, for the local government, we are going to appeal to our state governors. So please understand that, you know, power is not forever. Is it after eight or four, four or eight years, you're out of there. What will you be remembered for? I remember going to South Africa in 2018. Why? Because Mandela lived there. And that was his 100 uh, year and the centenary celebration. And people all over the world came. And we had all they said, wearing an, a, 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 you know, a cloth inscribed on Mandela, I became a celebrity because <laughs> people were wanting to take selfies with me. Why? Because of what a man did. So we are not going to be remembered for what we have, but what we have given. Mm. I think that is what we should take home with, and then the, the governor should know that there was an Ambrose Ali, there was uh, one Ogba of that I see go around today, I celebrate Ogba Mudia. Look at University of Benin, look at, uh, you know, it was not a university graduate. And Bruce Ali, look at Bruce Ali University. That's why you are here sitting down. You know, that's the reason. So we must begin to look at posterity. Okay. Time after now, I think if they can reflect hard, 
they will not be running around grabbing and canning all they can grab. Thank you, Patrick Awosage. That seems to know my history so well. <laughs> I know it very well, <laughs> and you know my very well. Too. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you for your expression, <laughs> and uh, thank you for the attitudinal change you brought about. Mm -hmm. That is the way forward in terms of uh, changing the narrative. And big thanks to my big brother, human rights <laughs> activist, <laughs> Solomon <laughs> Dilbert. You almost took bread out of this, but I thank God at least God brought it back. <laughs> Thank you. And big thanks to you, Romeo Ubo. And I uh, wish you all uh, a beautiful day ahead of you. Thanks. This is where we call it a wrap on the discussion and basically on today's TMI. We do this on the next one. Don't forget, tomorrow is another day for TMI with Evans Onohogie. Goodbye.